I decided to be a designer when we moved from London, England to Montreal and we took the Queen Elizabeth ship and it was a drawing competition for children. There were about 200 children drawing and uh, I won the competition. It's a competition. The first thing that what I drew was luggage. I was fascinated by how my parents managed to get our entire apartment in London into luggage, into a few crates to move to Canada. So from that moment on, I, I was fascinated about objects around us and how they can make our lives better. What? I think professionally, the first products I designed, I was at Rodolfo Benetto studio and I designed a, a television and I designed a lamp for Valenti. I designed dashboards for Fiat. And I think all those products in a way uh, were a way that I started to embrace the idea or start to understand, let's say, product development and what I could contribute. I, I always believed that design can touch every aspect of our daily lives from micro to macro. So be it clothing, a shoe, a watch, a mobile phone, a glass you drink out of, the toothbrush you use, the sink that you interact with, the house, the apartment, the furnishings, the buildings, uh, a restaurant, uh, hotels, hospitals. I feel that it's all uh, part of the idea that the built environment is what shapes our social and human behaviors. So I, I feel like a pluralist and I always wanted to be a pluralist actually. I'll say that. A lot of people say I have a specific style, but I don't really think I do because if I design, let's say a perfume bottle for, I don't know, Ize Miyake or a Prada or somebody of that nature, as a designer, you have to kind of collaborate really well and understand the clients you're working with to do something successful. So in a, in, a, in a way, the product or the end result is not just you. It's not just about your sensibility or your language or your style. It's a collaboration between you and client. So if it's more of an artistic project, then it's very much me. And um, my interest in the world is a lot of times is to do things that are very amorphous and organic and soft and fluid and very human. I try, I try to humanize the physical things around us. Most, the question I get asked mostly from young uh, students and young designers is, how can I become successful? And I have an issue with that because see, you have to be careful about the word success. And I think a lot of times they're saying, how do I become well known or how do I become famous? But that's not something you should pursue as a designer. The way you become famous or successful or however you want to put it is probably with years and years and years of really focusing on doing good work and doing each project better than the last. And I think that that, that accumulation of developing products or spaces over time inevitably will bring you success.